In this video, we will discuss specifying constraints as assertions and actions as triggers. We've discussed built in constraints like unique, not null, entity integrity, and referential integrity constraints in the previous lectures. Additional types of constraints that are outside the scope of built in constraints can be specified as assertions. Each assertion is given a constraint name and is specified via a condition. For example, specifying a constraint that the salary of an employee must not be greater than the salary of the manager of the corresponding department. By using the create assertion command, we can specify the constraint as assertion. Here, the salary constraint is the name of the constraint and the check clause contains the condition of the constraint. The DBMS is responsible for ensuring that the condition is not violated. Specifying actions as triggers A database that can spontaneously react to events occurring inside the system, as well as outside the system, is called an active database. The ability to respond to external events is called active behavior. To specify automatic actions that the database system should perform when certain events and conditions occur, a trigger is used. A trigger contains a condition. If the condition is violated, some user needs to be informed. A manager might want to be notified if an employee's travel expenses exceed a certain limit by receiving a message whenever it occurs. Whenever the condition is failed to satisfy, the DBMS initiates the action to send an appropriate message to the manager. Suppose a manager wants to be notified whenever an employee's salary is higher than the salary of his supervisor. Several events can trigger this rule, inserting a new employee record, changing an employee's salary, or changing an employee's supervisor. The action to take would be to call an external stored procedure, which will notify the manager. The trigger can be created using create trigger command. The trigger is given the name, salary violation. It is used to remove or deactivate the trigger later. A typical trigger is regarded as an ECA model. The ECA model has three components, event, condition, and action. The events are database update operations that are explicitly applied to the database. In the example we have discussed, the events are inserting a new employee record, changing an employee's salary, or changing an employee's supervisor. The trigger must ensure that all the three possible events are accounted for. In the example we have discussed, the events are specified after the keyword before. It means that the trigger should be executed before the triggering operation specified in the event is executed. An alternative is to use the keyword after, which specifies that the trigger should be executed after the operation specified in the event is completed. The condition determines whether the rule action should be executed or not. The condition is specified in the when clause of the trigger. Once the triggering event has occurred, the condition will be evaluated. If no condition is specified, the rule action will be executed after the triggering event occurs. If a condition is specified, then the condition is first evaluated. If it is true, then the rule action will be executed. The action is a sequence of SQL statements, but it could also be a database transaction or an external program that will be automatically executed. In the example, the action is to execute the stored procedure in from supervisor. Triggers can be used in various applications, such as automatically maintaining database consistency, monitoring database updates, and updating derived data. In this video, we have discussed specifying constraints as assertions and actions as triggers.